so it's it's Rosh Chodesh Sivan as of now. Okay, tonight is the first of Sivan. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Uh, tomorrow night we're going to see the moon. So the plan is to accept Shabbos as early as possible and eat, and then be finished by you know before sundown, so that we can go see the moon. The moon should appear sometime before sundown. God willing, it's fun to see the moon. So there you go. And uh, I've begun. I've realized in the last few weeks. I can understand now better Limud Schus on those who, back in the day, were scandalized by the very notion that people would say Kiddush Levana on Rosh Chodesh. So for people who are studying with Rabbi Rubinovich, that's, you know, of course, that's, that's exactly what says in the Rambam, that's exactly what says in the Talmud. You know, why wouldn't you do otherwise? You know, that's Ikra Din. But for other people, it's like un, un, inconceivable. You, it does, it's not a matter of how much proof you could bring for the books and all those other things and what the base Yosef really meant and Rabbi El Harar, it, it doesn't really matter. Notwithstanding what Rav Kapach shows, that doesn't matter. When you open up the Lulach and it says what Armin Hug is, Armin Hug is not to say Kiddush Levon on Rosh Chodesh. There you go. That's it. Checkmate. You can't say things that are not in the Luach. That's not Armin Hug. Anything that's not Armin Hug is inherently forbidden. Okay, so once you have that, well, the Luach tells you what the Halacha is. It tells you what the minhug is, and we have to do like the minhug is. We'll get back to this soon. The luach knows best, apparently. Um, yeah, and like I said, I was surprised that you could. I basically put out a book about that. That everybody could read the, the Shulchan Aruch and not realize the Shulchan Aruch is talking about Kiddush Levan of Rosh Chodesh. I never saw that in the Shulchan Aruch. You're right because the Shulchan Aruch assumes that you read the source book beforehand. The Shulchan Aruch is just the the summations, but he, he defines the terms in the Beis Yosef and the Kesef Mishnah. Where he already showed you what the Talmud and the Rambam say it means. What he was just using their terms. What? what? What wording does he use that would make you think it's enough? Well, he says Ravana Bichidusha means in its renewal. So you could think that that means sometime in the first half of the month while the moon is growing. And that's what that's literally what it means. And it's it, it, in in some contexts it means that, but in the Talmud, as described by the Rishonim, it's certainly not the case. It means Rosh Chodesh. Means or is when the new moon first appears. It's, it's very new, newest part. So you've seen this before. You can remember this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so get yourself one. You can answers all the questions. By the way, those of you out in internet land, get yourself a copy of a Chodesh Hazelachem, sole distributor. Well, I'm so happy I can come here and help you segue into your. No, whatever. I forgot. I have to. I should. I should tell people. I have it. I have it available for sale. So you know. Um. What was he saying? Yeah. The, well, what, what's the question now? What is it? I'm just saying, usually when something makes a mitzvah, it's from the beginning. Yes, it's from the beginning, yes. And and, and that's what that's what Unkelus also translates as. If he doesn't specify the way to serve very long, do you think it's... Well, the Shulchan Aruch then throws it at the end. You have to wait seven days. Right? Mm -hmm. So then that is, like Rabbi El Harar said, that has misled many people into thinking that before seven days... You know, the, the, forget about it. It's all all bets are off according to the Shulchan Aruch. Why is he saying that? Yeah. What? Why is if, who? If you say his intention is really from Rosh Chodesh, why is it so? Ah, so if you read through the Beis Yosef, it makes it very clear that the Talmud was talking about the first opportunity. His reason might be with this. That's what it means. And then he points out that later in history, there was a Kabbalistic idea. He says the Rejik Tilia, which we which Rav Suriel found out was, turns out it's not the Rejik Tilia. It's misattributed. It's a different Kabbalist, but it doesn't really matter. He said. An idea that we don't have the original. We wish we could have the original, but apparently uh, everything is about sevens in Kabbalah. And by the way, take it from Sefer Vayikra, everything that we do, we first wait seven days, right? When's it, when, Mila doesn't happen until after seven days have passed. So to the Korban of, of the animals, only ready once it's gone through seven days. And there's everything that requires purification, etc., or just to become some sort of maturity in Judaism takes seven days, Right? And on the eighth day, that's when things happen. So this is a deep Kabbalistic idea that we found re regarding all sorts of mitzvahs. So it must be that somehow or other there's this Inyan, because today is the day of Inyanim, right? Rosh Chodesh, uh, uh, Erev Rosh Chodesh Sivan is a, is a big Inyan, right? Why? Because they say the feel of Shla. The Shla wrote a prayer, and now everybody has to say it. It's a big Inyan. So it's an Inyan to wait seven days for something. This idea is not expounded upon by the Beis Yosef. You have to find the original source, except the source we haven't really found it. Until Rav Tzuriel showed me that Rav Shul, uh, Professor Gershon, Gershon Shulam found it. So we put in the book there. 
that it's this uh sorry which book of uh it's it was safer yovel of something or other i have the i have the pdf it's one of the things that were surreal one of the last things he sent to me mm. before he passed away so that's why i said it by the way but surreal contributed to this which is why i said you know it was dedicated to his refua and he had passed away that was an elo it got out late it was supposed to be put this was supposed to be put out on rosh kodesh nisan last year so uh was a saying so it's a kabbalistic idea that you have to wait seven days for something like this and by the way it means at the beginning of the eighth day he says at the beginning of the eighth day not seven days the whole point was they were waiting seven times 24 hours from the mulad which is incorrect it means seven days mix us especially with the first day okay so people have this mistake what are you going to do they think that that the base yosef meant din they don't know the difference between what is uh ikar hadim and amidas chasidus you know what the what the Shura Salacha says, the, the, the letter of the law, and what things beyond the letter of the law are. That's a very that, that's a very sad thing that they do. It's a it's a lost distinction. I'll give you an example. There was a fellow who was reading the Sefer Mitzvos. He was just going through telling people, here, let's just learn mitzvos, the Gadol. It says Usr for a Kohen to enter the temple when he is intoxicated, right? Shikor. And then the next Isr that the Rama brings is it is forbidden for the Kohen to enter the temple when he is. Peru Arosh. So what's Peru Arosh? So the one reading it thought, well, Lefroa Rosha Isha, Ufarat Rosha Isha means her hair is uncovered. The Sota woman is brought to the temple. The Kohen is supposed to take off her hair covering and let her hair down. Right? Uncover the hair. And we all know that it's forbidden to walk around with your, your hair head exposed. You can't you have to have a yabakal times. Either it's uh, an Easter of walking out your your head uh, exposed, and it's a positive commandment to have your head covered at all times. That's the way most people perceive it. And we saw that the Groh holds, it's not the case, right? So, yeah, that's what we do. Whenever we mention this, we take it off just to show that the Allah is like the Groh. But many people have this, this feeling that, and I've seen this in writing from Rosh Yeshiva, Hayot that the Shulchan Aruch brings this Midas Adin, and everybody does it, it's now become obligatory. Okay? That's how they go. So he read that for a Rosh means a Kohen also is not supposed to enter the temple with his head exposed. Right? But it turns out that's not the Lacha. Param, in this case, Para Rosh for a Kohen means well, it, it literally, uh, yes, literally that's what it means. La Halacha means more than 30 days growth. So he's unaware of the actual Halacha. He's just transposing his own understanding of these terms. And incorrect, like we said, because Really, there's, there is no prohibition of having your head exposed, because if there were such a prohibition of the Torah, it would also apply to women. But we know that girls after Bas Mitzvah don't put on yarmulkes, right? If there was a, some sort of prohibition, then, or even a, a mitzvah say to always have one's head covered, then it would apply to women also, because not, not, it's not, it's not Zmangroma. But we don't hold of such thing. That's like That's the proof, basically. There's no real mitzvah around there. Like the Vilgon says, there Claude Milsa, there is no such thing as having to wear a head cover. Except when you're davening, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know the, uh, the people who wear a hat all the time in respect for the yeah, so, no, I felt illusion because in our faith it's um, not really there aren't kings and lords and people like that anymore. Yeah. Really but were there ever I don't in Judaism? Really so that we had a king, but we never had an aristocracy like some people have certain in the temple they have ranks, but we never had it that you know uh, other people you know there's a head it even says Ben Melech head Yodhu. okay by the way that's what was in Europe if you ever if they if the king showed up or one of his emissaries or they're reading a royal proclamation you'd have to take off your hat that's still the case in court at least in I guess in when in respectable courts in the United States they sing the national anthem what do you got to do in the United States? You're at the bowl game. You got to take off your hat. You walk into court. You have to do something or other. You have to take off your hat. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've been in a situation where people were taking the citizen's oath to become a naturalized citizen. You have to do something in front of the judge. So you take off your hat for that. You've seen such a thing. Okay. I've been been at the Met game. You have to take off your hat. I know the same. Yeah. They have places of prayer. They have. Yeah. Prayer. Yeah. They have this other this other thing. By the way, this is where the Taz says, by the way, this is part of the, the misunderstanding. In Europe, it was basically Hugo Sagoyim that lasted Peggy Post type of stuff. You could walk around the hat outdoors, but you're indoors, you can't wear a hat. Who made up such a rule? But the fact is, is that the Goyim, 
keep this rule like it's you know like it's a mitzvah you know it's like jc came back and said from now on you're all going to go to church and you all make sure that when you're indoors you won't wear hats so they take it as a, a thing. So the Taz says, because the Goyim keep this as like, a, you know, Chok V'lo Yavor, Chukosagoyim, you should always keep your hat on. You, Jew, don't do a thing like that. If you're walking around with the hat outdoors, you also keep your hat on inside. You don't do this thing like, oh, I'm indoors, I have to take off my hat. Nimsa, that you're always wearing a hat. So people take this Taz to mean, oh, Jews always have to wear their hats. We never, you know, even you're indoors, any, any situation, a Jew has to always wear his hat. That's not what the Taz was saying, but that's how people misunderstand it. So we're getting off the topic. The point was, this fellow did not understand what the what the mitzvah is because he is transposing his own perceptions of what the basic words mean onto this halacha. Right? So pararosh, they meant a Kohen has to wear a head covering at all times. And it's true, by the way, if a Kohen wants to serve in the temple, he has to wear his turban. However, that's because the Torah says a Kohen has to wear a turban. And a Kohen cannot serve wearing less than the required garments, which is, you know, the, the white underwear and the, the white tunic and a colorful belt and a turban, right? That's the basic laws, the basic uniform of a Kohen. So, so too, I can understand why people have been, misunderstood the Halakha and Shulchan Aruch, and because the word Rosh Chodesh doesn't appear in that in Simon Tuf Kuf Vav of Or Achayim, you know, to, to go and say, and by the way, they're discussing Kiddush Levana, Rosh Chodesh, to them, it's a big Kiddush. They never heard such a thing. But if you had read the Beis Yosef, you would have understood this. Certainly, if you had read the sources upon which the Beis Yosef has based himself, you would have known that already. If you had read the Talmud, either Talmud would have told you that. If you had read Rashi, if you had read the Rambam, you would have known this. I know that. The Rabbi Barchim has like, you know, four arguments for it also. It also says, continuing the Gemara, it says, the Chodesh Bismano. Whoever says the Bracha Bismano, well, if it's not Zman Bracha, then you can't say it to begin with, right? No, Zmano means the night of Rosh Chodesh, as it does in other Mishnayas, like in Rosh Hashanah, where Zmano always the night, the 30th night of the month, where today was the 29th, correct? Tonight is Rosh Chodesh. It's 30th. The 30th is always Rosh Chodesh. It's supposed to be Rosh Chodesh. What makes it Rosh Chodesh? When they spot the moon. So that's what Bismano means, finding the the the, the Chodesh Bismano and other things. And then the Gemara continues, what does it say? And the Rambam points out that, yeah, if you do it on Rosh Chodesh, you're Bekabal Pnei Shechina because of Zek Keli Van Vehu. If you don't do it on Rosh Chodesh, then there's no Indian to stand up even. Yet everybody says, Birkas Levado, what is it, uh, three days a week later on Motzei Shabbos, and they stand for it because they're told it's your Bekabal Pnei Shechina. You only make Kabbalah Pnei Shechina if you're doing you're doing our Rishon Kodesh. <laughs> is there any really a situation where you would be sitting for the Kafim of Adam? Well, if you sit, I guess if you sit, because usually you go outside. It's just uh, okay, happens to be sitting. yeah, but it's you're supposed to. Say, I I we found it last last uh, month Rosh Kodesh ER. I drove with some with uh, someone who was here. We got in my car to go up to the highest peak around here, where you have a clear view to the west. Okay. So. And uh, that's where we saw the moon. But we got out of the car so we could st we could stand up. We saw it through the car windows. And that's where we spotted it. 